Rob is a senior from Mendham, New Jersey. He's a student in the Carroll School of Management concentrating in marketing and leadership. He is also involved with APA, Kairos, Freshman League, and he's one of the worst basketball referees on the intramural staff. <laughs> so without further ado, everyone please give a warm welcome to Rob. How's it going, guys? Joey, you're my test. Can you hear me back there? Joey? Perfect. All right, awesome. All right, um, so as you guys can see, uh, my talk is called uh, Reflection on Reflection. So I thought it would be fitting if uh, we started with a little reflection to get things going. So if you guys could all humor me for the time being and uh, close your eyes, we're going to do a little examine. All right, um, so I want you to relax, eyes closed, pretend you're not in a talk with 50 other people around you, you're in a nice reflective space. Start to breathe in deeply through your nose and out through your mouth. Inhale deeply through your nose and then out through your mouth again. Now I want you to think back about this past week since Easter Sunday and kind of the whole week in, in between. I want, to think, I want you to think of everything you kind of did over the week, who you interacted with, what you said, what you did. And I want you to pinpoint one of the moments, or perhaps the moment, where you were at your best self. Now I want you to think of the people that you were with, what you were doing, what you were thinking, and why this makes you your best self. Now I want you to think of a time over the course of this past week when perhaps you weren't at your best self. It doesn't have to be your worst self ever. But it's just a time maybe you were off. You weren't feeling your best. Something wasn't going right. Same thing. I want you to think about who you were with, what you were doing, what you were thinking. All right, now you can open up your eyes. And the reflection is over. Um, so, if you read my little blurb, it was basically just a bunch of buzzwords like search for personal development or introspection as a way to dress up the question of why do we reflect so much at Boston College? Because it is very tough to have gone through this school without ever doing some type of reflection. All of you tonight have been tricked into doing some type of reflection. <laughs> but programs like Arupe, or for Boston, or APA, use reflection as a cornerstone to understanding the meanings that these organizations provide. And it's not just service or immersion programs. There are weekly examines, meditations, 48 hours, kairos, halftime, everything else in between. They even incorporate reflection into some of the CSOM courses, uh, core courses now, like Portico. The point being, we cannot escape reflection while at this school for four years. But this emphasis on reflection is not a nationwide phenomenon. I have multiple friends from home uh, that went to different schools all across the country. And if I ever tried to explain to them uh, that multiple times during my Boston College career, I have literally drawn a house and the windows represented my hopes and fears and the chimney represented my stresses and the shining sun represented all I find happy in the world, they would have thought I just joined a cult after high school. So then what is the point of reflection? Why do we reflect? Uh, first answer, this guy right here. Uh, not me, the statue. Um, I'm sure everyone in this room knows who this is. And if not, your perspectives professor failed you miserably. And if somehow you do not, uh, this is St. Ignatius of Loyola. 
Um, just a quick background on who he is and how he became to be a person that we give a statue to. Um, St. Ignatius was born, uh, yeah, St. Ignatius was born in Spain as a part of a large aristocratic family. Uh, I stole his quote from Wikipedia. As a young aristocrat, Ignatius had a love of martial exercises and a vain, gl glorious desire for fame. Basically, he loved fighting, seducing women, and he really, really loved when people told him how awesome he was. He probably would have fit in very well with a lot of the male culture here at BC. <laughs> he was a very successful and respected army hero, known for his leadership and courage on the battlefield. However, during a battle in 1521 at Pamplona, Ignatius was severely wounded when a cannonball shattered his right leg. He was taken back home where he endured an extremely long recuperation period where he was basically by himself the entire time. All he had with him were two books, one on the life of Christ, one on the tales of the saints. And with all that time and those two books to keep him company, he began to reflect and reflect and reflect. He thought about the person that he was before the injury, obsessed with fame and being this hero. And then he thought about the person that the world could need him to be, perhaps something else, perhaps the person that God was asking him to be. Long story short, he would ultimately go on to founding the Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuits. Uh, he'd write the spiritual exercises uh, where we take the examine uh, from today, and ultimately became a saint remembered for all eternity. So therefore, at Boston College, a school founded by Jesuits, it would make sense that we reflect a lot. But I think this story of St. Ignatius starting the Jesuits is only part of the reason why. Intentional reflection is such an important part of being a Boston College student. I think it starts with the question of why did I come to college? Or more specifically, why did I come to Boston College? Because you can pay a significantly smaller tuition to learn more or less all the same information at some other school. You can basically just Google how to fill out an income statement or read Excel for dummies, and I still think you'd be a functional member of society. That's basically how I got through my internship this past summer. <laughs> but I truly believe that something else drew us to this type of university. We get constantly lost in a sea of college rankings, GPAs, class ranks, internship and job searches, and forget that we, became to, we came to college to actually learn about ourselves. We came to try new things. We came to be adventurous because we had this little four-year window where for the first time in our lives, maybe our lives didn't revolve all around playing a high school sport. Or maybe if we were the shy kid in the back of class, we finally had a voice where we could speak our mind. We could find within ourselves different people than the ones that we kept buried within ourselves for 18 years. We want to grow as people and actually achieve this sense of personal development. And that right there is where the power of reflection comes in. Because we need to do something that helps us bring out the versions of ourselves we keep locked away. Because reflection in itself is not the, is not the answer to the who, the what, the where, and the when. That's what you go for Excel for Dummies for. Reflection is the answer to why. Why do I do this? And why do I feel this way? Because this is actually so important. When you can answer these questions in your daily life, you're on the path to discovering who you are as a person, and then closer to answering the seemingly mystical Father Himes question of what does this world need me to be? And right here, right now, is actually the perfect time to start asking these questions. Because let's go back to this lovely st statue of Ignatius for a second. Hopefully you heard the wonderful talk that Michael Sacco gave during orientation on the statue of uh, St. Ignatius and why it is so relevant to college students. He talked about how the most iconic statue on campus does not show St. Ignatius as the founder of the Jesuits. It does not show him as being particularly saintly. This statue depicts our St. Ignatius 
as a pilgrim, wandering through life without a sense of who he is because he is constantly asking himself questions of why do I ask, act like this? How do I feel about my actions? How do others feel about my actions? And what is God asking me to be? Believe it or not, it took him 13 years from the time he was injured before he finally founded the Jesuits. This conversion did not happen overnight. That 13-year journey was one of a pilgrim. Father Howard Gray, a Jesuit at Georgetown University, talks about this idea of the pilgrim versus something he calls the tourist. Here's a quote from him. A pilgrim is not a tourist. A tourist undertakes a journey in order to look at a city, a historical site, a beautiful view, or to experience a different culture. What is important for the tourist is the destination, which isn't so for the pilgrim. The pilgrim undergoes the journey as a process of insight and change. The pilgrim is looking for personal meaning and challenge. As one writer so described this divide, a tourist goes through a city. A pilgrim lets the city go through him or her. Tourism is a way of entertainment. Pilgrimage is a way of enlightenment. And that right there, that's the crux of the choice we get to make as college students. We get to decide which of these avenues we want to take. We get to decide whether these four years are going to be that process of insight and change. Perhaps most importantly, we get to decide whether our time at Boston College is one where we think about all the destinations. Graduating with a high GPA, a low class rank, getting that dream job, then getting that dream promotion and working your way up through the company, or perhaps one where we appreciate the journey of discovering who we are as people. And please do not feel like these are the words of a self-proclaimed pilgrim that has mastered the idea of appreciating the journey of life, because I certainly have not. A tourist, because a tourist could simply be someone who waits all year for Marathon Monday only to black out and not actually be able to share any of the memories with his friends. <laughs> or, some, or someone that treats winning a mug and a t-shirt like it's the Super Bowl. <laughs> or someone that is willing to embarrass themselves as an 80s tennis player just for the sake of one Halloween night photo. But rest, rest assured, I have been the tourist many, many, many times in my life. And also, please do not think this is me preaching about how no one should drink at college or play intramural sports or dress up on Halloween, because all that stuff is great. The danger lies in not asking ourselves, am I drinking so much just to fit in with a certain group? Or do I care about winning a mug because it's the only physical form I have of affirmation that shows that I'm better than someone else at something? Do I dress up as this gorgeous, sexy tennis player <laughs> because I need everyone to think of me as the class clown so I have my role within the group? Because if not, then you're just the guy sleeping through the bus ride with his hand down his pants <laughs> that said, don't wake me up until we get to where we're going. Tourism is a failure to recognize that there is growth and development and meaning between the start point and your end goals. The tourist in us lives a reactionary life. By this, I mean we let the actions of the world dictate what our personal values are going to be. Let me give you an example. This isn't a true example, for the record, with my roommate, where our relationship is rock solid. There has been a rising tension between you and your roommate, who is also your best friend in the recent weeks. They realized you're actually a pretty disorganized person, and you've realized that they're a complete control freak. One day, you left the room pretty messy, to the point where your roommate can't take it anymore, and he finally snaps at you and starts yelling. Getting defensive, you yell back about him being uptight, and suddenly you guys are bringing up disagreements from the past three years of knowing each other. It escalates to the point where there's some shoves exchanged, and finally, your other roommates have to intervene. Depending upon what was said, it could take serious time for that relationship to repair itself, if it ever does at all. Now, weeks later, you don't talk to your best friend that much, 
and you missed that relationship in your life. You can see that it was stupid to let something so meaningful dissolve over something so insignificant. In this moment, you actually did achieve a, site, a type of personal growth. You may now know that it is not worth getting into a huge fight with your roommate over a messy room. You now, you now know how much, how in such high regards that you kept that relationship. You may even be able to see your role that you directly played in that whole situation. But what did you lose? Potentially a best friend. Is that worth it? You may never let this happen again, and for that you, as, you have grown as a person, but the damage has been done. This is a reactionary life, a value construction based upon consequences to actions that may be good, but they also could be bad. You're capable of ch achieving personal development, but there are sacrifices that may have to be made along the way. But no matter who we are or what we have done, all of us in this room are not just tourists. We have the pilgrim spirit within us because we know that we do not want life's consequences defining who we are as people. Because your life is your life, not someone or something else's that, you're, that we were meant to react to. We want to be the ones that are defining ourselves. The reflective life can help us do that. If you're saying to yourself every day, wow, I'm doing a lot of great things right now that are both good for myself and others, but wait, maybe there were days when I wasn't myself. Maybe there are areas of my life that I should strive to be better. Maybe for the sake of the self, but also for the sake of the people in your life. In that way, you are actually experiencing personal growth every single day if you're asking yourself those questions. What if you were able to recognize any aspects of your life that, that have room for personal growth prior to any type of altercation? What if you realized that your messiness may be troublesome to your neat roommate before he, even he did? What if you were able to develop a sense of awareness where you understood that your actions have an effect on the way other people feel? It's almost unbelievable when you think of the impact that you can have on another person's life without even realizing it. The best part of this all is that it does not take any type of superpower or skills to have this ability. All of you demonstrated this ability at the beginning of this talk. Seeing Ignatius was just a regular guy, like all of us, that went on to master the art of reflection because he incorporated it so heavily into his everyday life. We all have that pilgrim spirit resting inside us, and we do not need a cannonball shattering our leg to realize it. Perhaps more importantly, we know that we are not going to found the Jesuits overnight or something of that nature. St. Ignatius did not find the, found the Jesuits overnight. We are simply allowing ourselves to be a part of this continuous journey. St. Ignatius developed the pillars of the Jesuits based upon daily prayers, meditations, going to mass, etc. But he recognized that people of the world live busy lives, and it's unrealistic to believe that everyone could fall in the exact ways of the Jesuit order. But the one thing that he viewed as absolutely essential that literally anybody could do at any point during the day, all you have to do is close your eyes, was the daily examine, or reflection, daily reflection. It is the essential part of discovering who we are as individuals and what our role is in this life. We are in this room today because maybe we wanted to learn something new about an area that we would never otherwise studied, or maybe we were just interested by a topic that you saw. But one thing I want everyone to take away from this talk is that everything that you've ever loved, everything you've ever hated, everything that ever made you laugh, everything that ever made you cry is all in here. Reflection is the tool that allows those ideas to come to life and achieve that sense of personal development that we came to a school like Boston College to find. Thank you guys very much.